When it comes to climate change, my generation are a bunch of miserable, pessimistic, depressing, gloomy, bleak, disheartening doomers. And I get why they feel that way. We're constantly bombarded with the news about how we have only so many years to solve the problem and every year is the hottest on record and politicians won't listen and corporations are still polluting, yada yada yada. Can we just reset the doom button here? I'm not going to tell you that climate change isn't real or in a couple of decades it won't be absolutely terrible, because it is. And it will be, but the outlook and the human resolve to do something about it is not as bad as it looks. Remember when you were a kid and you read about the hole in the ozone layer and how it was causing Antarctica to melt faster and we were all gonna die for using hairspray? Well guess what? We fixed that. Every country got around the negotiating table and we all agreed to stop using the gases that caused the hole in the ozone layer. But you never heard about that, did you? Because good news doesn't generate headlines like bad news does. Here's some more good climate news that you might have missed. In the USA alone, of the 530 coal power plants that existed in 2005, only 191 of them are left. More US electricity is now powered by renewables instead of coal, and the gap is only getting wider each year. When it comes to a growing energy demand, the new installations are overwhelmingly clean energy, and less than 1% are oil or coal plants. Los Angeles is well known for its awful air pollution, but even during the forest fire season, LA air is nowhere near as bad as it was on a daily basis in the 1980s. In 2005, the EU adopted a continent-wide cap-and-trade system, which made companies pay for a license to pollute. Fifteen years later, emissions are down 21%, six years ahead of schedule. In one of the most stunning decarbonisation efforts in human history, France went from generating half of their energy from fossil fuels in 1978 to 10% and falling just 10 years later through a rapid rollout of nuclear and hydro power. In 2012, Great Britain generated more than 50% of its energy with coal, but less than 10 years later, and now we barely even switch the coal plants online, 97% of Scotland's power comes from renewables. This is up from less than 30% 12 years ago in 2009. We've been rapidly transitioning off fossil fuels for a while, and we're only getting faster. In 2020 alone, the world invested half a trillion dollars in total towards the transition from fossil fuels. And over the past five years, we've spent over 2.5 trillion. That means we're spending more on fixing climate change than the entire world spends on the space industry. The European Union topped the list with $166 billion of investment, followed by China at $135 billion, and the USA in third at $85 billion. And that was with a climate change denying lunatic in charge. This new guy is taking it even more seriously, so I imagine he'll do even better if you can remember what day it is. And compared to the fossil fuel industry, we've already been out investing them since 2013. But there is some bad news, I'm afraid. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. In the year 2000, we predicted that by the year 2020, we could generate 20 gigawatts per hour of electricity via wind power. Well, our predictions were completely wrong, because today we only generate 651 gigawatts per hour. We were wrong by 3,155%. Another catastrophic failure came in 2002, when we predicted global solar power generation would only increase by 1 gigawatt every year until 2020. We were wrong by 15,300%. Now we install 154 gigawatts of solar per year, and it only grows exponentially. Have I not been clear how much a gigawatt is? A single gigawatt can power 300,000 American homes, and you know how much those guys consume. If this rate continues, and which it will because it grows exponentially, by the end of the decade we should generate more solar energy to power 450 million homes. And if three people live in each home, that's 1.35 billion people living on solar energy. And that's just solar, not even accounting for wind, hydro, nuclear and geothermal. 
So it seems humanity is well on the way to solving the climate crisis. We're taking big steps to change how we generate electricity, even though it doesn't seem like it at times, because a lot of the progress we're making are things you never hear about. When you do things right, people won't be sure that you've done anything at all. Wait, 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 stop. We're not done yet. There's still a lot of stuff not addressed. Energy production is still only a piece of the wider puzzle of climate change. Another source of climate doomerism is the supposed runaway nature of polluting companies. My actions can't do anything because this Guardian headline said 71% of emissions are done by 100 companies. It's got nothing to do with me. This is defeatist bullshit. I have a question for you. Who buys from these companies? Do they pump CO2 into the air just because they feel like it? They have an incentive to because people buy their products. That means you, you buy their products. You buy petrol to fill up your car. You buy plastic made from oil that these companies dig up and refine. You power your home from a local gas powered energy plant. You, me and everyone else on this planet. You cannot absolve yourself of responsibility by shifting the blame onto corporations, most of which are owned by governments, things that some of us at least have control over at the ballot box. Governments, by the way, are also reining in these polluting companies by implementing carbon taxes or emissions trading programs, where polluting firms have to pay extortionate fines in order to pollute, which encourages them to cut down CO2 so they pay less in tax. Almost all of the world's major economies have implemented one of these programs, and many more are considering them. And those greedy polluting capitalists are doing their bit too. The overwhelming majority of investments into green technology come from private investors. That's because they're following the money. The return on investments from renewable energy is over 420%, compared to a mere 50% of fossil fuels. Some people who are particularly up their own asses think that the only way to fix climate change is to abolish capitalism. This is clearly not feasible. If your climate change solution is to completely dismantle and rebuild the entire economic system of nearly every country on the planet within a decade, you are not serious about climate change. Of course, there's one final bit of nonsense that the climate doomers like to bring up. And that is... Yes, China is the biggest polluter in the world, but they're not morons. They know you can't take over the world if everyone is dead, including your own labour force. Already, a quarter of Chinese energy comes from renewables, which is more than the United States, and China is home to some of the largest solar, wind and hydro plants in the world. And yes, sometimes it does look like China is taking steps backwards, like planning more coal plants as recently as last month. But this is because China has a tendency to under-promise and over-deliver, not only for propaganda purposes at both home and abroad, but also to use it as geopolitical leverage. The rest of the world is begging for China to reduce emissions, and are likely to make political or economic concessions to get China to cancel these upcoming plants, which they will happily do because they never intended to build them in the first place. Wait, you haven't talked about India yet. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, India is home to four of the world's 10 largest solar plants and they've all been opened in the past four years and in 2020 they planted 250 million trees in one day and even if only 60% of them survive that's still 150 million trees and actually the rate at which India increases its coal production has slowed quite a bit since 2011 down to 4 gigawatts per year from 17 and if we- You haven't talked about Russia yet. <sighs> All right, okay, Russia sucks, okay? They're doing nothing because they stand to benefit a lot from the creation of a shipping passage over the Arctic after all the ice melts. But the more we do to fix the things we can control, the more time we'll have to find answers to problems we don't have solutions to. This isn't just about Russia or India. The agricultural industry, the airline and shipping industry, and the mountains of plastic waste we produce each year still don't have definitive solutions. The intention of this video isn't supposed to tell you that everything will be hunky-dory and you can just sit back and not care. 
We're not doing enough yet, but the data shows that we're heading in the right direction and the world needs to keep the momentum going. The more we reduce emissions now, in the next 10 years, the more time we buy ourselves to invent newer and more efficient CO2 reduction technologies in the future and pressure corrupt lazy countries to do something. The more we groan and gloom about the supposed impossibility of meeting our climate targets, the less bothered we are to change it. You, dear viewer, are probably not in charge of a government, but if you are, please take a look at these very excellent policy videos. For your average citizen, you probably can't do a great deal. All that recycle more and grow plants in your backyard advice that was popular 15 years ago means absolutely nothing compared to the entire industrial output of the Russian Federation. <laughs> Though if I had to offer one piece of advice, it would be eat less meat because cutting meat out of your diet for one day a week cuts your total yearly emissions by like 14% and basically nothing else comes close to cutting that much out of your carbon footprint. Just buy the fucking soy burger you coward, you're a grown adult now, you can move on from the 2013 rage comic epic bacon memes.